Hi, I'm Cayman Reynolds, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can save a lot of money by building your own five frame nuke boxes. There's so many things you can do with the five frame nuke overwinter them, use them for mating nukes, and there's a couple cool things in that regard. And uh, you can, you know, stack multiple um, colonies on it. Some people use them exclusively for colonies, they're really handy to have. And if you are a hobby beekeeper, I think a five frame nuke is one of the handiest things you can have in the bee yard. I'm going to show you the measurements on this and also some things you got to watch out for when you're building it and when you are using them in your bee yard. There's a few things that people mainly don't know and they scratch their heads when it happens. I'll, I'll let you know that at the end of the video. And then, um, let's see, let's go through the joints real quick because I'm building this in a way that anybody who has just a basic table saw um, can make it. You've got to be able to make accurate, accurate cuts, but um, you don't have to have any fancy tools. Now, if you can make a joint like this box joint or finger joint, that's fantastic. That's what you most of the most of the time you will get from a commercial um, beekeeping uh, manufacturing uh, company. However, um, you don't need that. You really don't. And there are ways that you can make these strong enough without it. Now, over here we have a rabbit joint on this five frame ne medium nuke. And basically what it is, is you take a section of wood and you take a stacked blade, or you can use routers, um, a dado set, and you cut a big swath of wood out of there and you can just, you know, butt this up, you know, nail it to it. This one wasn't made for these two boards, but that's basically the principle, is how the rabbit joint works. And that works very well. Now, when you are building these five frame nuke, boxes. You have to make sure that a few things are addressed. And number one is that the spacing is correct. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it needs to be to where you can get frames in and out because that's one of the things that aggravates bees the most. When you build your own equipment and you're having to pry really hard or you're crushing bees against the wall or against the bottom or against the lid, um, Sometimes you, you can't help but accidentally squash a bee, especially when the colonies are really large. We try not to, but it happens. But when you have equipment um, that's like that, that's just really misshapen, it can cause a lot of issues and make the bees um, angry and, and make you a little angry too. So let's not do that. I'll give you the measurements here in one second. Let's run through a couple things really quick. So again, we just have plywood. I prefer solid wood, but you can definitely make these for like four bucks. Um, using plywood easily and if you you're able to source something from a buddy of yours who has a construction company or you have one, oh man you can make these things for a song now we've got our deep frames in here you can also use these for swarm traps though the biggest swarms might ignore the small of a cavity size but there's no reason you couldn't stack one on top of the other and then just strap them together and have two stories that would work very well now, many people are probably wondering why I have this entrance here. I love the fact that this design that you know, I've used in the past and have right now has a solid bottom. It makes it very easy to be able to just, you know, haul it off. Now, there is a device. I don't have it yet, but I'm going to be um, using that for this, and I'll show you when I get it. Um, I'm going to leave that in the comments and the link below if you want to check that out. But basically, you can get it at any supply company but it, it, it acts to where you can close this or open it at any time or reduce the entrance down. That makes it really handy. Now, one thing you've got to watch out for with nucleus colonies is heat. And this is all colonies, but especially with five frame nukes, they go from you know, barely filling these boxes a lot of times to you know, just blowing them up, so to speak. And on hot summer days, your bees will abscond if they don't get enough ventilation. This hole right here is great. You can put a screen on the bottom somewhere or the whole bottom if you'd, if you'd like. I don't like having it separate because these make great mating nukes and, or if you're making splits, you can just transport them easy. You don't have to worry about that whole bottom coming off. So I make them a little bit deeper. I'll give you the measurements on that here in just one second. Um, it does um, make it a little bit heavier, perhaps, not really. And you know, the bees work really well with just a hole like that. They do great with it actually. Um, it kind of surprised me the first time I tried it about 12 or so years ago. And the bees are really good, if they're good uh, bees, about pulling out um, 
the dead bees, if you have a random dead bee in there and, and debris and, and just pulling out that entrance. And what do you think they do in a tree, right? So uh, one thing also, um, if you haven't watched our videos on queen rearing, um, check them out. I'm going to leave them up here because we do them um, in the videos with a five frame nuke and they are awesome cells and great queens. So I think just for that reason, you should have a couple of these things lying around. All right. So to get to the measurements and building and all that, first I want to talk about um, this hole right here, um, it's a one and a half inch hole. You can make it smaller than that. Um, that's why I'm going to put that little device on the front and I'll show you that later. But when you're drilling those holes, you want to start on one side. And then once you have a little bit of a hole like this, you're going to go all the way and go to the other side and then drill through it because if you just go all the way through one side um, it's going to rip a bunch of the uh, plywood material. The bees really won't care that much because they'll just propolize um, the chunks that come off but that really helps me a lot. Now another thing with these five frame nukes, these frame rests, they're the only hard part about them and again if you have a stack set that's fantastic. Um, but what you've got to do is get your saw set up to where it will slice it down the right to the right measurement and then you're going to cut it in this way. I'm going to have a video right after this one addressing this and it'll be a short little video just talking about how you can cut it like that. It's really not that hard once you get things set up. It works great. It's cheap, so you don't have to have any special equipment, um, but anybody can do it if you've got access to somebody's table saw or your own. Just be careful, of course. All this equipment, um, if, if you handle it properly, is safe. Um, but if you don't, um, you know, I don't want to hear about losing fingers and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's get to the measurements. So all we have, you know, on this side, I mean, it's real basic, is we have 20 inches, by ten and a half. So we have two pieces that are 20 inches by ten and a half. That's not that hard to do. Just make sure your boxes are square. Use a square, make sure everything is square or you're gonna have rock in and your boxes um, when they get on top of each other aren't gonna fit quite right. Um, most people forget to square up their equipment and just don't assume because you purchased it from a, a company um, that they have it squared. And a lot of the stuff they do, but I've gotten some stuff before that was not square. And then you find out after you cut it and measure twice, cut once, all that kind of stuff. Now, this is three quarter inch CDX. Again, I prefer solid wood, uh, but this works very well if you seal it. You really have got to seal these things. Now, I'm going to be wax dipping this box, so that makes a big difference. If you're not wax dipping, I highly suggest before you put everything together and, and assemble it, that you paint the insides or seal it with something. I know it's a pain in the rear end, but these things will last so much longer. That's where they're gonna rot is up in here. They're gonna rot in any place that moisture can get to and start swelling and expanding this stuff. It's gonna start degrading it. All it takes is a little bit of exposed wood and your box starts um, having issues, especially if it's plywood, you wanna watch out for that. So um, we'll be sealing this with wax dipping stuff. We'll be doing a video on that before too long. So that's that piece right there. Now. Typically, your middle piece, the one that has the frame rest, is not going to be this skinny. But because we didn't want to have to do any joints over here and just keep it simple, it's pretty narrow. And it is just seven and a half inches. And also ten and a half inches. So, and you know, my boxes aren't completely perfect. They might be a 32nd of, of an inch off a little bit, but that's all right. Now the handles, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I'm not really a big fan of these, these cove handles. Um, they're, they're such a pain in the rear end. Um, you know, this one's actually a nice one. Some of them aren't that thick uh, or deep into the wood, but the problem is the deeper it is into the wood, the, the weaker the box, the more heat loss you have there. And a lot of them, you get them and it's just like, oh my goodness, there's like a quarter inch you can get your fingers into and you've got you know, fat thumbs like I do, and then you have it full of honey, it becomes a lot more stressful on you than it should be. Now, as far as the frame rest depth, 
we have three eighths of an inch because this is all three quarter inch stock. So we cut halfway into it. So it's three eighths of an inch this away. And then as far as depth, we have three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch by three eighths. Pretty easy stuff. Now the, the bottom, of course, you just, you know, put a bottom on, on the box. It's, um, I put multiple pieces. You see that here? Just a bunch of scrap pieces I had. Now you can have a nice fancy bottom. It doesn't even have to be this thick if you have thinner material. Again, the most important thing is that you keep the integrity of your wood solid by sealing it. It's so, so important. Um, so basically you just go 20 inches by the width, which would be nine inches wide. So, you know, with these sides together, it's nine inches wide total. And it fits this box right here um, pretty well. It's not perfect, but it, it definitely will do the job just fine. You can overwinter these five frame nucleus colonies. Now, the ha again, the handles, you can do whatever you like. I really like exterior handles. You can put them on the side. The boxes that I've built in the past, we only put them on the front and the back, and that's kind of with a purpose. Um, it's because you can only grab them this way, and this is really the best way to grab your equipment. If you're holding it like this, especially if it's got honey, I mean, just think of all that weight you have away from you. It's really hard on your back like that. It's so much easier like this. And so just keep that in mind. Um, now, uh, it's, let me see, if I covered everything. I, I talked about the heat and the absconding, right? Didn't I, I cover that? Yeah, I, yeah, I did cover that. So you've got to seal everything. I showed you how to drill the hole. Um, we'll be covering how to cut the frame rest in a short, probably two, maybe three minute video. Um, I'll try to have that up in the next day, maybe two days. And um, the, the joint, so there's really not a whole lot to it. We're gonna be showing you how to do so many things with these five frame nukes. They're so cheap to build. And I know we didn't cut it in front of the video like some people probably wanted, but the thing of it is, if I said everything that I felt like I needed to say and then cut it, we'd have a 30 minute video and you know it's about time for dinner i've been out here putting this thing together but they really don't take that long and especially once you get one down you can kind of get a you know you the measurements are a piece of cake so once you get a thing going if you got a good table saw man you can just go to town on these things and in uh, one day you can have a lot of these put together but again sell them up definitely do it oh by the way <laughs> uh, don't forget to um, assemble them really well everything's been glued and then there's staples. Now, if I didn't have glue or didn't want to use glue, use screws. Um, you don't have the joints. You need all the strength that you can get. But I promise you, between the staples and that, that glue, this is really tough. Now, I did screw the uh, handles in here, but that's it. So there's not a whole lot to it. Um, five frame nukes are really handy. And I, I highly suggest, if you, even if you just have two or three hives and that's all you want to stay at, I would still have a couple of these boxes handy because you never know when your bees are going to swarm. You never know um, when you might lose a queen or something. So if you made your own little split and had yourself an extra queen kind of in your back pocket, then um, you know, if an emergency happens, you have a colony, a little colony that's ready to just plug right in, kind of like we did in that video in December. Um, so I'll leave that um, up here as well because we requeened that colony in winter, which is pretty cool. Um, but you definitely um, can't go wrong having a couple extra little colonies around mating queens and these things so so handy thanks for watching our videos if you have any comments or questions or if i missed anything uh, leave them below